Hi there, Greg Sarnold, rendering specialist at Autodesk. Just want to cover this ocean displacement shading technique. We're using a vector displacement map to create these peaks and troughs in the ocean and transmission scatter to get this translucent effect in the, in the waves. There is this recent tutorial if you want to follow along with the scene file uh, you can download as well as the vector displacement map which we'll be using in this tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to start off by creating a polygon plane. And I'm going to scale it up quite high, so 500 units. Let's call that ocean. And then Control D, duplicate it and just move that down. This will be our seabed. And then just assign a flat material to the ocean seabed and just bring color down black so we've got something to just have something visible in our refractions rather than the, the sky which will create a physical sky and just gonna reduce the viewport radius so that we don't see in the viewport and for the physical sky just lower the elevation down to something like 10 and increase the exposure maybe 1.5 just so we can test our shading and we can bring it back down afterwards I'm going to assign a standard surface shader to the ocean water and before we focus on the actual shading I'm going to apply the vector displacement map so under the shading group for the displacement map just connect something there initially it doesn't matter what it is I'm going to break that connection and we're going to use the vector displacement instead so connect the image Arnold image shader to the vector displacement and then open up the ocean vector displacement that comes with the tutorial that should have downloaded and under the UV coordinates uh, we're just going to increase the scale UV just to just to increase the uh, repetitions okay so let's start off a render in the viewport now we don't have enough subdivisions in our plane geometry so I'm going to go to Arnold attributes for the ocean plane and increase the subdivision iterations choose cat clock just be careful when you should increase these iterations you can see our displacement is way too high let's go back to the displacement scale bring that down to 0 0.01 or even further, 0 0.005 go to our preferences, I'm just going to enable the PAL toolbar so that we can see uh, a wireframe debug shading mode so as we increase the subdivisions we can see how much subdivision is happening in the plane so maybe something like 7 should be enough, maybe 8 at the most and then just disable fog shading. I'm just going to move the camera around so that we can see the sunlight behind the waves so we can get a better idea of the translucent effect we're going to achieve in the standard surface. So let's reduce our roughness, specular roughness to just a very low value, 0 0.05 should be fine. IOR to that of water and then increase the transmission weight to 1. And I've just realized I need to increase the bounds padding slightly. So I'm going to use a low value of so 0.1. So we start off by a um, very really light olivey green color to the transmission color. And I'm going to use um, the same color, but a little darker for the transmission scatter. Which we won't see until we increase the depth. So if you notice I slightly increase, you see the effect the depth's having on the on the peaks of the waves here so let's increase that to white closer to white bring the depth down so with low depth value you can see how shallow the effect is it's appearing just at the tops of the peaks here so I'm choosing like 0.5 uh, and just desaturated a bit so it's a bit like toxic goo at the moment so one for each of those and 
And I'm going to bring down the skeleton exposure down a bit. So that's a bit more subtle, but just increasing the depth there. I'm going to use a bump map to break up the waves. So under geometry, bump mapping, we add a cell noise, up colour, R2, point value, increase the number of octaves, change the coordinate space to world. You can see it's way too much by default, so we the bump depth. Something like 0.001, which is one to slight amount just to, just to break up shading. Maybe increase the scale as well. Just, yeah, just to, just to break it up a little bit there. Okay, so here are the final shading settings I've used for the ocean shader. Also, experiment by adding a little bit of subsurface scattering, just to give more of a cloudy, sort of stylized effect. Reduce the transmission weight and increase the Subsurface color, you can see we're getting more of a cloudier, dirtier look to the ocean. Uh, I'm just going to disable that for now. And then finally, we can add some camera depth of field. And I'm going to add a lens effect imager just to get some vignetting and some bloom. Then just experiment with the Radius and the threshold. Something a little more romantic looking. Okay, there you have it. Thanks for watching and bye for now.